Hello lovely humans and welcome back to my channel. It's time for a vlog. Oh gosh, okay. Where have I been? What have I been doing? Well, life, life, and I just had to take a break. I've been doing booktube for years and years now and I just couldn't keep up with it as my life is going on. I'm getting married in a month, which actually seems kind of crazy that I'm coming back now. I'm not saying I'm coming back consistently now, but I'm even filming a video now. But things are actually kind of all in place at the moment, so it's kind of just chilling until the time. So that's actually kind of why I feel okay enough in terms of life stress to post. You know, I am still active on Instagram and TikTok and so I now kind of have like this big chunk of days where I'm home no other plans and I can just read and I really really wanted to vlog this is also kind of like the tail end of romanticy -athon, so I really wanted to read some romanticy books during this time as well because I'm just on a romanticy kick and I haven't really been able to vlog this whole time so I'm excited that being said let me tell you a little bit about what's going on what's on my mind in terms of my bookish stuff and we'll go from there so I got to the point where I had to like just take a reading break for like a week and basically since I started my channel six years ago I've just had like days here and there where I don't read but I've never actually taken like a dedicated stretch of time to not read but I was just like I need to just do something else because I felt like the reading pressure was becoming a lot maybe this doesn't make sense you guys when you're on social media and you have like a presence like you just I don't know like there's just internally applied pressures to like and it, it's maybe like pressures from a good place too right like there's so many books and I want to read all of them so then I feel like I have to read 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 and I kind of had to take a second to just be like no no reading at all and refresh myself be like it doesn't matter how fast I finish things I also was going through this whole like oh my god I ignore all my physical books what am I gonna do and then I felt like I'm guilty for reading too much of my kindle when I have this whole library here which we're gonna kind of make a plan for that but i kind of realized that it's my reading i can do whatever i want if i want to buy a million books and not read them like i can do that the only person that's making me feel bad is me so that being said in the beginning of the year i made like a, i'm going on a book buying ban video um clearly that didn't last very long but i have just over the years tried to be very conscientious with my book buying so just like over time i'm really trying to be picky or like if there's a book i can read on kindle unlimited first if i'm like just trying out the author like i'm gonna do that instead of just buying a physical copy sometimes i just tend to even just like reading on my kindle more because i can read in bed and it's just easier to take on the go i read at lunch during work so it's just been such a great tool for my life and then if i really really loved a book i will buy a physical copy of it after because then i'm supporting the author twice and you know i got to support my indie authors so i've just been kind of struggling with how to like shape my reading habits going forward and like what I want to do because obviously I still like to collect books that's how we're here that's the book nook the book nook my mom found this sign and got it for me I think it's great like so I do have a decent amount of physical books that I want to read so I'm like how do I balance the fact that like the kindle is just so much more convenient for my life with the fact that I do also love just reading like a book book and I'm buying a lot of books so that too i need to balance it so i have a lot of unread books on my shelves i think like 140 i totaled it at the beginning of the year not as bad as i expected but not great um i do think at some point during this probably after my wedding i am going to go through and do more of an unhaul and i really want to rearrange these shelves i feel like they really focus on like there's just like a lot of books that i'm not like really reading heavily in the genre anymore like there's like i don't know like i have really not found myself reaching towards like many just like non-romantic fantasies not to say i'll never read them again but like i feel like i found fantasy romance and i know that's what i love and that's what i want to read so like why try to force myself to read a genre that isn't my bread and butter if i know i'm not gonna like it however there are some that i do think i'm gonna like but i just realized that like i don't have to be forcing myself to read those kinds of books all the time i can just read them when the mood strikes so there's definitely some you know heavier fantasy books that i do still want to read but i know that like even when i do read them 
it's not gonna be like every book how do how do i just go forward with here with book buying managing my collection because i really just want also my collection to really reflect me and my tastes and to be a collection of my favorite books like i don't have time to have books i don't like on my shelves and i want my collection to be my collection with my favorite books so i need to restructure everything like i love all these shelves like the way that they are but also i want to make like a dedicated fantasy romance shelf like especially the genres getting so many special editions so many just like so much hype and like i'm really a lot of the books that i'm buying and that are coming in the mail in the latter half of the year are all fantasy romance books so like a girl's got to make room and just figure out my game plan for my shelf to reflect my current reading taste. Think the way I am not even going to think about all of the massive amounts of books that I own that I haven't yet read. I am going to focus on trying to read books that I've bought pretty soon after I purchased them. So like why purchase the book if there's no pressing need until I'm ready. To read it kind of to just help me manage spending my money help help my collection from spiraling out of control with me feeling like oh my god i haven't read any of these but you know like i don't know i not to say that there's anything bad about owning unread books like then you just have a whole wide range to choose from but for me i personally would just feel better having read most of the books that i own and knowing that i love them and i also want to be good at if I'm at least managing the books that I'm getting in this year and buying this year and with, you know, my new stricter policies on myself, then then I can start to kind of worry about the physical backlist that I own. So what we're going to do right now is I actually don't quite remember what I have physically that I've gotten um recently that i would like to read so we are going to redo my tbr cart and i'm really going to start to use my tbr cart as a tool to be reading the books that i am buying so like i buy a book i put it on the tbr cart and it's like a physical reminder that i just bought that book and i should read it soon and to be buying books as i read them however all these special editions and sprite edges and things like that kind of creates this need to buy things before they run out so then I might be buying some stuff before I'm actually ready to read and I have some examples of that but you know what I, I, I'm just a girl let's try I'm trying my best okay um since I haven't made a video in a while I do want to point out some recent faves so I have my copy of Bespelled on the shelf behind me I freaking love this book okay like the first book Bewitched so good Bespelled so much groveling in the first book Bewitched um which was like one of my top books of last year this book also was so much fun amazing um, this was my most recent book that i finished but it's wings so wicked by emily blackwood i had such a great time it was so much fun i loved it i was shook by the end i'm waiting for the next one i need an immediately like injection into my veins I, I just loved this i just flew through it and i adored it the honey witch by sydney j seals this was just such like a heartwarming little time it was so cute and cozy and sapphic and beautifully written and i want to be a honey witch now i loved 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 it just if you want to be feel like you're frolicking in a field or living your best cottage core summer life like read this book all right hopefully the light's not too bad here to a different corner of my room that the sun is not blaring too bad hopefully 
and let's talk about what I did to my cart. So my top is all my like fantasy romance books and my bottom is romance books. I'm not really in a romance mood right now so I probably won't read that all week. I'm so hot in here. But I do feel like I've just been having all of these books that I haven't been reading on my TBR cart and it, it, it's just become extra space instead of like a tool. I also was feeling really overwhelmed with the amount of books that I've been buying but looking at this okay I mean yeah it seems like a lot but it's not that bad as what I had built it up to in my mind the exception to this is I did not put um I got <clears throat> the guild series by Raven Kennedy I bought these um right now because the spine is exclusive and I did not want that to go out of print I've decided to sell my other copies though like some of these if I'm getting trad pub copies and I'm not super attached to my indie copies I'm just gonna sell my indie copies so with these I liked these gold dripping editions the best I find that trad pub books like the binding is just a lot better so I am going to read these but I didn't put these on the cart because they're kind of gonna be to the side and then when the last one comes out in September I would like to do a whole reading vlog where I just read this whole series I think that would be really fun and hopefully at that point I'll be back on my like making dedicated reading vlogs for things stuff so I didn't put some books that I got that were like exclusive editions here like from book boxes and whatnot because I'm still not sure I got the Romantasy Fairy Loot subscription I might cancel it I don't know I'm not feeling super attached to it so I'm sure like the moment I cancel it they're gonna come out with something that I'm like gonna be like oh my god I wish I had so I think these books that I put in the front are probably my top contender for books that I want to be reading um I have the Serpent and the Wings of the Night duology I just read a vampire book so maybe this will give me the same feeling because I just had so much fun the Run in the Holly Library I really I got it in the Target sale and like I have been seeing mixed things and I wasn't gonna buy something just for the edges but it takes place like in a library so and it sounded something like I would really like so I decided to go for it so it could be that um I actually was sent this book it's slightly different than probably the rest of the books on here it's probably not as fantasy romance -y, but it sounded really fun it's called how to become the dark lord and die trying um this is about a girl it's like a portal fantasy and like every time she tries to kill the dark lord she dies and then she wakes up and she does it all over again kind of like a video game kind of thing so in this time she just tries to become the Dark Lord. I think it's gonna be really fun, but I think it's not gonna be as romancy. So I might put that in the back and bring Half a Soul up to the front. Yeah. Half a Soul I technically got last year, but like it's a Regency fairy tale. I just know it's gonna be everything that I want. So um it's about a girl who literally has half a soul because of a bargain with the Fae, and like it's just supposed to be so cute and adorable. But then we have Powerful and her reckless by lauren roberts this is from the powerless trilogy i read powerless two months ago i actually have my copy here with my annotations i had so much fun when i read this it is kind of like the newest ya sensation at the moment we're following Payton, who is ordinary and in this kingdom if you have no special abilities you are prosecuted um and she kind of goes into this these trials and has to blend in despite having no powers. I found it very fun and entertaining. The banner was, banter was top notch. So I'm really excited for the sequel, which I have here. Um, then we have The Darkness Within Us by Trisha Levenseller. I, you guys know I love Trisha Levenseller. The Shadows Between Us is such a good book by her and I'm so excited to have the sequel in my hands. Um, and the first sentence of this book kills me. It says, my husband is taking too long to die. I mean, come on, come on. Um, and then the quote in the front is, there's no such thing as a bad idea, just poorly executed awesome ones, which is a Damon Seltor quote. So those are the vibes that we're getting going into this. So I just know we're gonna have my Morley Gray girly pop front and center. Okay, next I have The Familiar by Lee Bardugo. I wanted to get this now so that the black sprayed edge did not go out of print, but I don't know if I'm necessarily in the mood for like a historical fantasy right now. Fall of Rude and Wrath by JLA. I had gotten the B and N one forever ago, but I realized I actually hated the red color, so I'm just gonna collect the regular editions. But I've heard this MMC like feeds off of pleasure, so it gets spicy really fast in a way that makes sense, and it's like more edited than her other books. 
and you know I'm a JLA girly to my core anyways so this is definitely a contender how does it feel was picked up by bloom books and we're following a biologist who kind of gets into these games with the fae and I love a biologist I love a woman in stem getting captured by the fae so this is definitely a strong contender a promise of Peridot is the sequel to Dawn of Onyx which I read last year and loved and then we have the time I fell in love the time I got drunk and saved a demon I'm not really in the mood for like a humorous fantasy right now but I know when I am that's gonna be the one then on my romance which I'm not quite in the mood to pick up romance but when I am I have all of these waiting for me I have uh just for the summer Abby Jimenez which I do want to read during the summer so hopefully when I'm in the mood for romance I will read that Old Flame and New Fortunes, Love Redesign, Wild Love, Rule Book, The Catch, Swift and Saddled. I really want to read that soon. Not in Love. The fact that I haven't read Allie Hazelwood right on release is crazy, but I just like, I really feel like it's going to be specifically made for me and I'm like nervous to read it. Happy Place by Emily Henry and Not Another Love Song by Julie Soto, which I would probably pick up for Get Me Not First. But you know what? We're just putting the new releases on the card here. So that is my new TBR cart tour I'm actually feeling really good about this because it's way less than I thought oh honorable mention I did also get a copy of Shadows and Storms by Helen Schreier which is the fourth book in the Blood and Steel Legends of Thesmar series which I love this series but I did not put it on the cart because with these books I actually kind of have just been reading them on my Kindle and then I like at planning to transfer all my annotations to my physical books um, to have them in my collection so I think that is what I'm going to do for this but I think we have a good stack starting off strong and I'm gonna pick up a few books read a few pages and see which one calls me the most. So I think the ones looking at this I'm gonna try. So it's kind of also turning into a try chapter book, a uh, uh, vlog. Is Serpents in the Wings of Night. Uh, the Darkness Within Us. And How Does It Feel? And I will report back after I read one chapter of each and see which one I'm feeling the most. chapter is the definition of support women's wrongs definitely I think these girlies in this book start a little unlikable um put your tail down please uh <laughs> but really fun so far she's a morally gray fmc and I love her Carissa's writing so much. Um, I read her whole War of Lost Hearts trilogy last year. I have a whole reading vlog. That was just such a trip. I feel like she really writes like um, her fantasy romances are more I guess what on, like the epic scale of the fantasy romance where there's a whole epic fantasy but there is also a very strong romance element and her writing is so beautiful like the last line of this prologue is or last few lines is after all, vampires know better than anyone how important it is to protect their hearts. And love, understand, is sharper than any stick. I love that. I'm really like, I I'm feel like I'm going to lean towards this one, but I'm going to give the last one a try just to see how I'm feeling. But um, this one might win. I think this prologue was pretty good but um I don't know I started reading this and I haven't had the time to sit with a book that I know I'm gonna love like I know I'm gonna love this book because I'm a Chris of Broadband fangirly so I think she is the clear winner here and I'm very excited not to get too ambitious but maybe I have time to read the second one this weekend too we will see but you know what? if I don't it's my new motto the books will be there when I have time to read them. Right now I have time to read this one, so we're going to start that. I'm going to relax tonight. I do want to watch some Bridgerton. Another thing that I'm incorporating is not 
always picking reading instead of like watching TV or whatever. So I do want to watch Bridgerton, but I am going to read this tonight. So I'm excited. And you guys get to come along for the journey. Good morning. So it's the next morning. I read to about page, let's see, 76 so far. I'm really loving being in this world. Carissa has just such good writing. You can see I already have some tabs. I picked, um, I love to just pick tab colors that match the book. I used to have like a more in-depth system, but I kind of stopped that because I realized I was just annotating based on vibes only and like, unless it's something, I don't know, more intricate, I don't know. I kind of go back and forth on how I do it, but like I kind of like doing it based on vibes and just like quotes that I like. I just do what I feel. So anyway, so I took two colors that match. Um, I have, I really need to figure out a way to actually organize all my tabs because right now they're just in a huge zip block and it's quite annoying. But it, look at that pretty hardcover. I love it and it matches so well and I'm just using this pen. I'm thinking I'm, I'm like usually a pen annotation girl, but I'm thinking of getting those like highlighters everyone has because I think they're fun. Oh, hello puppy. Hello puppy. Oh, he's going to come snuggle. Oh, there he is. He's sitting on me. But he doesn't want to look at the camera. Hi. Just my baby, my reading buddy. Sorry, it is technically a work day. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I'm working from home, but I'm like just chilling during lunch right now. So I had a pretty chill morning and then the only other thing on the docket for today is I'm going to go to the gym. And if you guys don't know, I used to be like a competitive power lifter. I stopped powerlifting completely during COVID, so now I'm just trying to build my strength back up. I'm actually doing a deadlift one rep max test, which is cray cray, but I don't really talk about my fitness stuff on the internet because it's really more about books, but that is another facet of my life. So I just, I have my morning donkeys. I've been trying to make coffee at home, but I am alone this weekend. Alex is at his bachelor party actually, so like I'm like, I'm gonna do what I want. Um, but probably not buying it every day is saving me money. So I'm like, okay, I'll go back to make my own coffee after my little fun weekend alone where I'm reading all my books. So yeah, I'm gonna go to the gym. And then when I do come home, I think I'm gonna do my like deep weekend clean after I'm like all sweaty because I get sweaty when I clean anyways. Um, so that it's just like done and I can just like relax the rest of the weekend. So I'm gonna read a little bit now. Probably not too much. And uh go to the gym and be chilling and then be cleaning and then back to this and more reading but yeah I the vampire trials are very interesting it's definitely a very bloodthirsty kind of world I'm very intrigued by our two characters and I just think Carissa just strikes the balance of like plot romance um and spice very well where you know, I think fantasy romance is a spectrum, but I truly feel like you're getting the whole package with her books. Hello, hello. I have excellent news, and that is that I finished Serpent in the Wings of Night and I am absolutely obsessed with this. This is definitely one of my top books of the year so far, I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> because it just had a balance of everything. Plot, world, politics, romance, characters, spice, like I loved it all. I don't even know if I told you guys what this is about. Um, but we're following Araya. She is a human that was taken in by a vampire. And kind of made to be her daughter and not just any vampire but a vampire king and then we have these trials at which the end the goddess will grant you a wish and so Araya has basically been this human living in this vampire world she's obviously very weak and people underestimate her and she enters in the trials and there she encounters a rain who has his own motivations for being there i love them like clearly carissa broadbent does a really good character study and their characters were just so in depth and like you could tell sometimes in fantasy romance and I don't always hate this but it can be very insta lovey especially if it's like the faded mates thing um but this I truly felt like the characters took their time to get to a 
to have their romance develop like it just felt like it was just the perfect mix of everything i love the vampires like i just loved it all like ugh, oh my god it was so good so for today i it's sunday i think i'm just gonna start the next one right away also i picked this up and i realized they changed like the paper thickness i hate when they do that in between books just leave it one paper type but they still match so but it just looks like the second book is not as big as the first book but it's longer so just leave them the same so i can judge them the same so anyways so this one i will probably start reading because i was obsessed with serpents so i think that that is where to go bye I was really tempted to start Swift and Saddled as a palette cleanser in between the two today, but I just feel like I don't even want to break with the duology. It's just really nice to just read them straight through, so I think I'm going to pick this one up because I'm not sure if I'm totally like, I don't know, like I want to read this one, but like I have to continue. Like the way that this book ended was actually insane, actually insane ending. I cried. I don't normally cry when I read books. I was like, oh my god, what the hell? I cried. I cried. So, I just, clearly this book had an emotional impact on me. Chris of Broadbent can do no wrong, and I'm really interested to see where this goes with the new setup and dynamic that we have between all of our characters. So, let's go. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Hopefully, there's just enough light to film this by, because I have some thoughts I just want to put out here because apparently now booktube is my personal diary um about my reading and just like how I've been feeling so it's Tuesday I read Serpent in the Wings of the Night over the weekend and then when I got to Sunday to pick up a new book I was theoretically going to maybe either pick up Swift and Saddled or the sequel to Serpents and I picked up neither and I just girl rotted all day in my bed, scrolling on Instagram, watching YouTube, living my best girl rot life, honestly. And it's so crazy how like throughout the week my mood for books changes just based on circumstance and like what's going on. So I've kind of started to come to like an idea of how to manage it because kind of when I started this video my like feelings of that I haven't been reading like enough physically or like I'm feeling really weird about my reading just like all year long and hopefully this plan after much trial and tribulation where I've just like I've constantly been like I don't know like why I'm picking up what I'm picking up like like I don't know I've just felt like really weird or like I just haven't been like satisfied with what I've been picking up and no no not even that like I don't know I just like maybe feel bad that I haven't been reading enough physically or like that I haven't been reading that I've been reading like only on my Kindle, not enough like serious books, um, which like, screw that, like reading is supposed to be fun, you can read whatever you want if people are like, oh my god, like books are just fast fashion. Yeah, sometimes a book is not, like when people say Kindle books are like fast fashion, sometimes the purpose of the book is to not be a masterpiece, but is to be a great time. That doesn't devalue the value of the book, like I still enjoy those books. Not everything I read needs to be a literary masterpiece. Sometimes I just want to read about people getting it on. Maybe they're aliens. Maybe they're fae. Maybe they're normal people. You know. You know. So. But like I do want to read more. Sometimes like epic fantasy. Sometimes thrillers. Sometimes different things. Um, and I've been trying to like balance the part of me that wants like all the fun fantasy romances all the fun and like light and fluffy and like contemporary romance like all of those fun books the me that wants to read through my physical tbr of books that i've already bought um and the me that's just like i don't know what i want to read <laughs> next and like why am i picking up what i'm picking up so uh, this has just been an ongoing like let me tell you this is not just something that i've been thinking about while I'm filming this, this has kind of been going on in my mind all year long. And you can even see last year, I started struggling with this a bit. Like I did my book buying ban um, video because I was just like so overwhelmed by the amount of books that I have been purchasing. So it's definitely just been like a, I don't really know how, like what my book buying is going to look like, what my book reading is going to look like. 
So enough about all the background on it. But what I think might be the best way to structure my reading, and this can change based on circumstance or whatever, but the way that I see it is the way to pick up like books that are different than like my normal bread and butter. So things that are more like maybe literary fiction or um, mystery thrillers, horrors, like those kinds of books. I think the best format for me is actually audiobook. And I don't know, like there's always something about me that's like if I it's my favorite book, I want to, you know, read it physically. But like I don't have to do it that way and I actually find that audiobooks for mysteries and thrillers and horror actually elevates the experience for me because I just feel a little bit more immersed and like more scared <laughs> honestly when I'm reading these books on audio. So like to me that's the ideal way to consume these kinds of books. So if I want to be branching out and reading different things like audiobook is probably the best format for that and I don't have to feel bad for choosing that format for me to experience those kinds of books. So Typically, when I have an audiobook going, I will be doing that up in my car on my commute. When I, I go for a bunch of walks throughout the day, I like to get my steps in. Um, or like sometimes, sometimes I'm multitask. Mostly it's honestly just for like when I'm on my commute and walking around and I can typically finish like an audiobook a week. And I mostly do it through my library. I have an Audible subscription that I've been meaning to cancel for months. Keep forgetting, I have a bunch of credits, so I gotta spend those and then I will probably cancel Audible and just go back to my library because my library has a pretty solid selection. So to me that's how I can handle this piece of like oh my god I want to be reading these books that are different than what I normally read and like so if I'm branching out like to me like a thriller is not a book that I'm gonna want to like hang on to after it's done unless it's like the best book ever. Um, so to me I think that's a good way to experience or read some of these books that I'm like wanting to potentially like branch out to but haven't been picking up this year. I think audiobook it's free for me at least if I do it through my library like it's a really really good method and with audiobooks I don't feel the same pressure as reading physically to finish it quickly because I just kind of pick it up as I go throughout my day and I'm multitasking. So I think that's a good method and then I have realized because I tried this week to after I finished my serpents and I tried to start the next one but it was like late Sunday like I just really have a difficult time reading physically during the week it like I just cannot I like just everything like going to work like being an adult like it's really really hard for me to focus on a physical book during the week when I have other stuff going on whereas the barrier for entry for Kindle like it is just so much easier for me to have my Kindle on me and read it during lunch to lay in bed when I'm tired and read on my Kindle it's just like it's just so much more easier for me to integrate into my everyday life than like a physical book that I just tend to read so much more on my Kindle during the week and I love my Kindle for that so my thought is with physical books, if I want to read something physically, just wait until it's the weekend to pick it up or it's a time of period of time where I have time to read these physical books. And I think that will help me to change it up because I was getting frustrated feeling like I just keep picking up the same kind of books. Um, and then I start and then I picked up like a horror on audio and all of a sudden like I'm back to reading my other stuff physically and on my Kindle. So like, you know, like it's just weird. My brain, I don't know. I'm also getting married in a month, so I'm stressed about that. And a lot of this stuff going on in my mind with my reading habits, it might just be me transferring my stre wedding stress to something innocuous like books. <laughs> like, why am I stressing about books? I don't know. Um, and then, so for physical books, I'll just pick them up when I have the time to read them which is mostly like the weekends and I think this also pairs well with 
trying to buy less physical books because I will have less time to read them if I mostly only read them on the weekend. Like obviously yes it will carry over to the week sometimes or sometimes I might just want to read a physical book during the week. Like there's no hard and fast rules here but this is what I find myself doing anyway so if I kind of tell myself that this is how I can structure my reading so I don't feel bad that I'm not reading my physical books during the week you know. And then there's so so much on Kindle that I love to read and I like you know what at the end of the day like especially I had a rough day at work today like when I come home I don't want to read a literary masterpiece I want to read about some girl on an alien planet getting it down with a big green lizard alien man with a vibrating ding dong and you know what I'm gonna live that life and that, <laughs> that's why I'm currently reading Wed to the Alien Rogue I mean, but not just alien romance, like, just fantasy romance, like, these books that people are like, oh my god, blah, 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 blah. Like, I want an easy read that is entertaining and that I am enjoying. That's literally my criteria, and I also don't want to think too hard. That is the beauty of Kindle books. Like, I just feel like I can combine it and have the best of all of the worlds where I can have my fun Kindle reads, my, you know, other physical books, which some of them are just fun fantasy romances too, but I, you know, I like to collect them physically if they have pretty editions. Um, those on the weekends or other books that I am so drawn to that I feel the need to pick them up physically. Uh, a lot of my contemporary romance, if it's an author I like, I really like to get physically so because I have a whole little physical romance club. You know, like those kinds of things and like, I guess setting like a time to say that like I primarily read these on the weekends, like it just gives me time to have with my physical book collection that like I'm not forcing myself to read them when I really just don't have the capacity to. So and I think with that too like I also just need to buy less books physically which honestly looking at my TBR cart that I put together it really was not as bad as I thought for like an accumulation throughout the year like I definitely think I can get through a decent chunk. I also am with these rules like I am more likely to pick up a contemporary romance during the weekend and also depending on the book I could get more through more than one physical book in a weekend um but if I just set out to say okay I'm just gonna read this book this weekend and then I happen to read another one like that's fine like there's no hard and fast rules but to me this in my brain because obviously I'm very type a about these things makes sense in a way just to manage my reading. With that being said, I am reading Wed to the Alien Rogue by January Bell. This is her, oh my god, what is the name of the series? I don't know, it's her Green Lizard Man series, um, where these human women go to this planet for, they're supposed to be like, they think they're on a diplomatic mission, but actually, um, the government has traded them for equipment to like, be brides of these warlords but like the warlords think the women are there like of their own volition and like it's all consensual so then anyways like, now they're like kind of in these like marriages but obviously the warlords they're all about worshiping the woman so they're not gonna like you know they're their husband and wife in name only unless the woman like chooses to pursue the relationship which like obviously they all do because why else would we be reading these books but it's fun to read about like the circumstances like clearly at this point it's the eighth book in the series I've gone through I've learned about all the culture I like all the people they're just so like alien romance is just so fun and easy to read and I love it I love it so much this has really been the year of alien romance for me I mean like not every alien romance I read is a hit typically if I don't like it I will not finish it but the authors that I found that I love I just like devour everything by them so after this one I have um her like companion series to this one with like the same characters that I'm probably going to start that one next and I'm just having a good old time especially when I'm so stressed out like I am right now like this is the only thing this and like fun fantasy romance and uh, just kindle books in general but like mostly like alien romance has really been what I've leaned on leading up to my wedding like this is what I can stomach then on my audiobook I started Six of Sorrow by Amanda Linsmere I read Starlings by Amanda Linsmere last year which like I feel like she's like her books don't have that many reviews on um Goodreads but I found her book Starlings because I was specifically looking for a botanical horror books which like if you have any recommendations I love when like plants and like things like horror like with plants is just, I just love it so anyways I read that book from that and I saw she had a new book it's like I'm gonna read it so it's about um these six girls at all have the same birthday and then one of them goes missing um and then comes back and like something is just like really off with her and then another one of them goes missing 
And so like, what's going on? And they live on this like small island and there's this legend of the witch. It's just like small town, like creepy horror vibes. I have a feeling it's gonna get more gory, but yeah, if you have any more horror recommendations, I love horror. Oh, I also think it might be queer. Um, Starlings also had a bi main character. So I don't know, I'm getting some vibes in between two of the girls. Like there's definitely something going on there. So I'm having a good old time with that book and the cover is so pretty. <laughs> I feel like the title of this vlog actually <laughs> needs to be a week in the life of a mood reader because I feel like I've changed so many things throughout the course of this vlog. So just to catch up, over the week I read two alien romances. Um, I read Wed to the Alien Rogue, which is the last in the January about accidental alien brides. It's just a fun alien time. And then I read Alien on flames which is the spin-off of that i would say both of those books were like solid four stars alien romances like they were entertaining i had a good time and then let's see on friday i started this book the ornithologist field guide to love and it's about like these two academic rivals that are hunting a magical bird and this just sounds so perfect but i was going to the beach um yesterday so i was like I this is not like really a beach book I picked up Swift and Saddled by Lila Sage and of course I loved every single second of it. It was perfect to read it on the beach. I loved it and I just feel like because Romanticeathon was happening in June and July I really haven't been reading that many contemporary romances and summer really is the time for contemporary romances. So I feel like I'm going to swerve and read some contemporaries now because that's really where my mind is at and I feel like sometimes in books I just want something that's going to like really like pull at the heartstrings and just something that's like very emotional and I haven't I mean, obviously, like, fantasy romances can be emotional, too, but it's more so focused on, like, the action, whereas contemporary romances are really about, like, the characters' individual journeys, and I really have been kind of wanting more of that, so I just finished this. I loved it. Um, in this book, it's the second book in the, what is it called? Is it the Rebel Blue series? Or, yeah, a Rebel Blue Ranch series. I love Small Town. I love all the characters. I love the setting. It just makes me want to go, like, her ride a horse in Wyoming, and we're following Ada and she is an interior designer that comes and helps to renovate the ranch with Wes who is like the middle child in this family and their romance was so good and they just dealt with like insecurities and depression and it just was like a really beautiful character story and it just ugh, like just ugh, gave me that feeling you know so I don't know it's Sunday afternoon I'm gonna go see a movie soon so I don't know if I have time to start another physical book before the week but reading romance during the week is easier on my brain than reading fantasy during the week um I don't know if I would pick back up or I'll just feel guide. I feel like that one deserves its own weekend, but uh, we come over to the cart. I have options. I do have options and there's some, but actually I've read this one already, so I should take this one off, but I just bought it cause it has like the mountain thing. Like my shelves are a mess okay but i have options most of these i've read some of them i haven't um i don't know actually i have read most of them that's nice looking at this but i don't know like i could read wild love by lc silver next or love redesigned i was supposed to read this one forever ago i love lauren asher and these two are supposed to be really good this one i might want to save for my honeymoon while I'm on the beach in Greece. It just seems like a good time to read that as well as Happy Place. But those would really hit the emotional notes. The Catch by Amy Leah might be good because I love Amy Leah and this looks so cute and summery. This is a potential. I actually don't know what I'm feeling right now. And then on my Kindle, the next book, so I could either pick up a physical book or I could go to my Kindle and just start my Kindle book for the week that I would read like at work and at night. So let me see what's on my Kindle and like what I'm feeling right now. So I did get from Neck Alley, which I, I very neglect my Neck Alley, it's bad. Um, I, I have Double Apex, which is about an F1 racer and an engineer that like works on the cars, which like we love women in STEM. Um, I also have Mr. Nice Spy, which is like a spy contemporary romance. That seems really fun. 
Serpent in the Wings of Night and Swift and Saddled, which these are two very different but equally hyped books. So I have my fantasy romance hype and my contemporary romance hype. So I feel like that's pretty fun. And I think this just goes to show all that goes into mood reading. I also really wanted a vlog to demonstrate like what a reader's life looks like, like working a nine to five job. Even if I didn't get as many clips during the work week, you guys can kind of see that like I really read a lot more on the weekends. Um, and it's harder for me to necessarily keep up the same pace of reading during the week with physical books but yet kindle books allow me more time mostly because they're more flexible and i can bring them to work i read on my kindle every day at lunch um but i'm not gonna like put myself at lunch at work because it's weird um so that is kind of what my life is like and just like fitting reading in and just honestly this year I have really not been posting that much. So I don't even know if I posted about this on my YouTube, but I gave up TBRs this year because I really felt like it was restricting my reading and I ended up mood reading anyways, so I don't have a TBR. It's actually been kind of nice and I haven't been reading any less and I just don't have any guilt about not reading certain books. Yes, I've been trying to be like, oh, I need to read more physical books or blah, 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 but I mean, I'm sure I had that whole breakdown earlier. Not like mental breakdown, like a, you know, like a list basically of like my new like reading not rules but just like reading structure that I think is going to work for me so like that kind of thing like I just pick up whatever I feel about and I don't have any like guilt about it and I don't have any like expectations of certain number of books to read this year like yeah I want to read through my physical books that I own but now that I put them on the cart it's really not <laughs> as like dire as I thought where I thought I had so many physical books unread there's honestly like a lot less than I thought so that made me feel better so yeah I don't know if I'm gonna pick up something on my kindle or physically because i do just love the feeling of a book in my hands this has been just a very interesting vlog i haven't vlogged in a while but i think it's nice to give a peek into the chaos that is my brain and my life and just being a normal person that works and reads and how do you like fit all of that in especially in the chaos that is book is social media because you're constantly like bombarded with what everyone is reading and you want to keep up and you want to read everything and you just kind of have to separate that and figure out what is best for you and it's a hard balance it's a hard balance for sure so that's that um i'm gonna probably do some chores and then maybe i'll figure out what i want to read next or maybe i just won't pick anything up until later who knows